I just want to ask you a very simple question. Do you really want to become a programmer? And I'm pretty sure the answer is yes because you're watching this series. So keep my two advice somewhere printed or written on a piece of paper. Just make sure that you know them. Number one thing is have patience. If you don't have patience or you're thinking that, hey, why we are reading documentation, just write the code. No, that's not how actual development is being done. We need to go through this documentation. I will go through this in the entire series probably 100 times. So have patience in that. We're going to face tons of problems. We're going to debug this code quite a number of times. So have patience there as well. And my number two advice is don't just listen. Do as I say. Follow these tutorials. Open up a code editor and write the code. Until unless you're going to write this code, this series is going to make no sense at all. This is surely going to give you a visual good perspective, but I want you to do all the things that I do here. Okay. So first and foremost, what you need to do is go to nodejs.org. As I said, we're going to be using tons of more things. So I'm going to walk you through eventually when we are going to need it. So go to nodejs.org and we need a node as well in order to start this project. So go ahead and download this one, which is LTS. LTS stands for long term support, which is more stable than the current one. So you really want to get this one here. Even if your version is a little bit older than this, that's totally fine. So go ahead and download it. It's available for Mac, Windows and Linux as well. And once you have downloaded, we are going to be using Terminal for that. Terminal is uh, the black shell windows, whatever we call that. So I'm going to fire up my Terminal app. And this is my Terminal app here. Now, I'm going to be using this one. If you are on a Windows, you really don't want to use your default command prompt. It's not that great. So I highly recommend to use the git bash. You can download it from git-scm.com slash download. And you really want to use this one instead of the default Windows one. This is so much better. So go ahead and download this and set it up for Windows. It just click, click, next, I agree, yes, yes. That's it. Okay. Now, first and foremost, we're going to check whether the node is installed in our system or not. So we're going to say node dash version. In some of the commands, it's just version. It's sometimes it's dash dash version. So I just sometimes forget. So it's either one of them in all of the applications. So don't worry about that. So mine is fairly recent. As long as you get some number in the default version back, that's totally okay. That's totally fine. Okay, so we're going to hit control L to clean the screen. Now, what we need to do, I have created a folder on my desktop. Let me bring that up here. So this is ecom, a totally empty folder where you want to keep all of your files. So just make that. I call it ecom, you call that learn code online, LCO, whatever you like. Okay. Now moving forward, since we'll be using Gatsby and React for this entire project, we technically don't need to install React, but in case you want to have it or you have it already, that's totally okay. You can always go to the Git uh, docs here as well, React docs, or you can directly move on to their GitHub page. They have a pretty good instruction as well at how to use it, all these tutorials and functions in case you want to check that out. The main meat part of this entire thing is going to be Gatsby and we will be creating this project using Gatsby. Don't worry, you don't need to know about it much. We are going to read the docs together. So let's click on the docs and see how we can get started with that. Surely I highly recommend to read more than what I'm telling you here, but it's totally okay. Let's click on quick start. And now we're going to be using the Gatsby. We don't need to run this tutorial. It's pretty much clear documentation. So first and foremost, how to install the Gatsby CLI. This is the command. And the reason why we have installed the node is because we want to get this NPM. NPM is a service that comes by default with the node. So we're going to be copying this. NPM install hyphen G gets B dash CLI. Now we're going to be copying this and we will be pasting this onto a terminal, but we are not going to run it right now. If you are going to run this right now, it's going to give you tons of errors. We don't want that. So why we are going to get errors for that? The reason is this hyphen G option. Hyphen G option stands for global install. And whenever you are doing anything global in your computer, whether you are Linux, Mac or Windows, sometimes there are permission issues for that. So what you really want to do is fire up your terminal for Windows guys. Just open it up as an administrator. Just right click and open as administrator. For the people who are on Windows and on Linux, you really want to use the sudo. The command is same for uh, Linux and for Mac. Sudo gives you the permission to install these such packages globally. So we're going to hit enter. It's going to ask for your password. Enter your amazingly secret awesome password and hit enter. Now, since in my system, uh, Gatsby is already installed, so I don't think so. it's going to reinstall it. Probably it's going to just update for a few seconds and that's all we're going to do. 
In the meantime, it does all the stuff. You can either pause, pause the video or you can just keep on carrying on. So we're gonna keep it in the background and I'm gonna move up here. Okay, so what is the next command? So how we can create a website from Gatsby is simply by running a command Gatsby new Gatsby dash site. So this is the command that we are having here. Now, definitely we don't want to change the folders. One command, very important one is how to start the deployment server. It says Gatsby space develop. That's gonna be we will be using. And it also says the project is going to be launched, launched at localhost colon 8000. And then we are having editing web page services. So it says, hey, all the pages are in the source slash pages. Don't worry, I'll give you a brief tour, tour, whatever you call that, of this uh, entire Gatsby project. And one more thing, we won't be using Gatsby build and serve because we are not building it for any uh, production ready. We will be using GitHub for that. So that's the basic of the Gatsby. I hope you are pretty clear on that. Just a quick revision, Gatsby new and the project name is how you create a new site. So there we go, my package was already installed, so no big deal. Now I'm gonna change my directory to desktop and did I call it ecom? So there we go, ecom, do a quick ls, totally empty. Now we're gonna run the command. So we're gonna say Gatsby, I highly recommend to use tab in case you are on a Windows. Uh, not on Windows, I guess Windows is not friendly with tabs, but again for Mac and Linux, use the tab. So Gatsby, and then we can simply say new and then the name of the project. I'm gonna call this as simply LCO project. You can call it anything, but here is my tip to all of you. Whatever the variables, keywords, project name, whatever I'm using, just use it exactly same as of now. It will help you to debug your project. Once you have done this project, then feel free to show your creativity in the, uh, I definitely am not the best in uh, deciding the variable names and project name and all these things but it's gonna be really helpful for you if you keep all the names and the variables and everything exactly as mine to debug all these things, but rest, totally your choice. We're gonna hit enter and it's gonna create a project, LCO project. What it basically does, it just clones a repository from the Gatsby, which is a starter, kind of a starter package from their website. So it is very important that you are connected. You should be connected on internet. Since you're watching this, I believe you already are connected with that. Okay, that's the basic one. Now, what we need is a VS Code. Our VS Code is not up and running, so let me fire this up. There we go, our VS Code is here. All we're gonna do is just uh, drag and drop our folder into this VS Code. In the meantime, it can do all the stuff in the backend. We're gonna go up here. Notice the LCO project. We're gonna just drag and drop into this. I am using VS Code, which is one of my favorite editor. And you really want to install a couple of plugins up here, which I use. So one of the plugins that I use is Prettyfy. I'm gonna name them and I'm gonna show you that as well. In the meantime, it just starts building and all these stuff. Okay, let me go all the way full screen. And now let me show you a couple of plugins that I use onto this one. Uh, because sometimes people do ask them. So these are extension, not the plugin. So one of the plugin that I use is uh, Prettyfy. Uh, prettify to the code, uh, prettier. So prettier is used to kick in the auto formatting that I will be using for this one. And if you're gonna type uh, ES7, this is also gonna be a co, an extension that I'm gonna be using for React. Uh, what it gives you, it helps you to write a lot of boilerplate code, definitely is going to save some time. It is by DSZ Nas there. Sorry, sorry, I cannot spell your name. It's really hard for me. I apologize. But again, this is the one plugin that you should use. Apart from them, there are a couple of here, there are plugins like uh, bracket pair matching and all of that. Not very functional and just fancy stuff to make it look good. These are the compulsory one. ES7 surely is going to help you a lot. Make sure you use that. And prettier as well. So these are the basic one we'll be using. After the, apart from that, no, we don't use anything much fancy. Okay. So this is all good. This is all awesome. And we're gonna be just using that. Now the one file that you first and foremost want to just open up is this, not file, actually folder is this source. So a lot of meat information is here. Apart from that one, the most important file is Gatsby config, which is like super, super important. It's very important. Okay, so there we go. We have created a new project. We have learned a little bit about the documentation process as well. I will be coming up here quite a lot. We'll show you a whole lot of things about Gatsby and all these stuffs, but I think that's a pretty good start. We were able to open up our project. Now, one last thing that we'll be doing before wrapping up this video is we are gonna be calling Gatsby develop. So we're gonna copy this command. 
and we're gonna go up here now press control and tilde sign just below your escape key and just paste this this is a default terminal by vs code and we are going to just enter that this is going to deploy the project onto a local host and we will be able to open it up on the browser just after it says info bootstrap finished that means it's all done now all we need to do is it says compile successfully too we're going to go up onto the website and we're going to say hey i want to go on localhost 8000 and that's your gatsby default server i love their icons i love their color scheme that's why the purple okay so there we go, congratulations. Within the second or third video, you were able to launch up a Gatsby project without knowing a whole lot of idea about what it does, what it can do, and what we can do with that. But that's totally okay, that's totally fine. I highly recommend to read a little bit more onto the previous documentation like introduction, not for the uh, this further one. We'll do that together. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you're enjoying it. If you're enjoying it, do hit that subscribe button. Don't forget that it's only motivation for me to keep doing all these stuff and make sure you invite your friends as well. That's it for this video. I'm gonna catch you up in the next video.